This is called the Cool Seas Roadshow. Some people think that because our water's cold, there aren't that many interesting creatures living in it. But the exact opposite is true. There is a huge variety of living creatures. And I'm going to introduce you today to some of the larger creatures that you might hope to see around our coastline. And this is a young bottlenose dolphin. This one's four or five years old. And it's already larger than I am. I'm going to show you this young dolphin's mother. This is a big animal. People don't realise how big our dolphins are. Okay. This whale here is called a minke whale. And this one, the minke whale, is the whale you're most likely to see around our coastline. There's its breathing hole on top of its head, but this is not a big whale. The biggest whale, the blue whale, is twice the length of this horn. The blue whale is so big that we can hardly imagine it. Its heart is the size of a motor car. The blue whale's tongue weighs the same as an elephant. Its blowhole is so big that you could crawl inside it. The blue whale is the largest creature ever. Who can tell me what this is? A seal, that's right. This is the female grey seal. And here we've got the young grey seal. I knew you'd say that. But seals do something every day that dolphins don't do, that makes it easier for us to see them. They come out of the sea. Watch out for them. You can see seals when they come out of the sea all around our coastline. We sometimes find creatures that are quite different. Who can tell me what this creature here is? A turtle, that's right. This large one here is called the leatherback turtle. Who can tell me what leatherback turtles eat? Jellyfish. Jellyfish, that's right, well done. Lots of jellyfish have a sting in the tentacles as their defence. It tends to stop most other hungry sea creatures from eating them. But the sting doesn't work on the leatherback turtle because its skin is so thick and tough just like leather, that's where it gets its name from, that even though it gets stung when it eats the jellyfish, it's not bothered. There's two different kinds of what here. What kind of creatures are these? Sharks, that's right. Two different kinds of shark. This one here is a typical shark. This is the great white shark. Most of the time, big fish like sharks eat other fish. The great white shark is what we call a top predator. So sometimes it eats other creatures, like turtles, like seals and sea lions. In fact, the more you discover about sharks, the more you realise that they are amazing creatures. This is a young basking shark. This, the second largest shark in the world, swims around our coastline with its mouth wide open, catching little tiny creatures called plankton. The biggest plankton's the size of your little fingernail. The smallest plankton is so small that you can't see it. But these little creatures are all this enormous shark ever eats. Let me show you some of the things I found on a single beach. Plastic bucket piece of rope from a fishing net, empty ice cream container, an empty bottle, washing up liquid. I didn't know dolphins use fairy liquid. Another plastic bottle, empty crisp packets. Things like this are quite attractive to a dolphin. They play with things in their mouth. What's going to happen to the dolphin when it gets this inside its body? It may well die, that's right. And this was once a gas-filled balloon. It's basically a plastic bag, but this one says happy birthday on it. 
If we either deliberately or accidentally release the string and watch the balloon float away, remember, we live on an island. That balloon will probably come down in the sea. Where the string could get wrapped round a small creature's neck, and that particularly happens to seabirds, and they die. Just imagine this floating in the sea. And imagine along comes a leatherback turtle looking for food. What will the leatherback turtle think this is? Jellyfish, exactly. To a leatherback turtle, this isn't plastic bag or balloon, it's food. They eat them by mistake. And what do you think happens to the turtle when it gets this inside its stomach? It will have a blocked stomach and it will be unable to feed itself and it will probably die. Now we don't want to kill these creatures, do we? So there you are. Make sure you don't release gas-filled balloons into the sky. Don't leave your litter on the beach, please. Right, I'm not going to talk about rubbish anymore. But just before we finish, we're going down on a beach in Mexico. Two months ago, female turtles dragged their bodies out of the sea. The only time they ever come out of the sea they drag their bodies up to the top of the beach where we are now. They dig a big hole in the sand with their rear flippers and into that hole they lay their eggs. Two months later, the fact that the sand is hot means that the eggs start to hatch. And we're about to discover what happens next. I need two pupils to help me, please. Right, you come and stand around here. And you come and stand here. Right, you're not here on holiday today. You're what we call conservation workers. So I want you to put your hand in there. Now wait a minute. There's nothing going to bite you. There's nothing slimy you wouldn't want to touch. It's not a trick. Put your hand in there, in the middle, down to the bottom, and show us what you find. Just, just bring it out and show us. It's a turtle egg. There's over a hundred in each nest, and they're all going to hatch out soon. See what else you can find in there. It's a baby turtle, they're hatching. Right, put the baby turtle down there. Right, you see if you can find one. There's another one there, get that one out. Your job as conservation workers is to help the turtles out of the nest as they hatch. Right, don't stop now, let's get another one out. Right, they're coming out one by one now, thick and fast. Put them down there, that's it. Right, there's another one. There's another one hatched just there, look, that's it. Got two there, look. Right, you hold that one. You hold that one. Right, eventually over a hundred baby turtles will come out of each nest. Here on this beach today are these two conservation workers to make sure that they come out of the nest safely and they get safely down the beach into the sea without being eaten by a predator. But there will be foxes, crabs, seabirds, sometimes even people, waiting to catch them and kill them. And that's why out of every thousand turtles that hatch out, only one will ever grow up. Only one in a thousand survives. And that's why lots of turtle populations are facing possible extinction. But all over the world, there are conservation workers like these two working hard really hard, night and day, to give these creatures a better chance. So let's give them a clap. Well done. Excellent. Hi, say hello to all of our friends. I tell them not to drop rubbish in the sea because, I mean, like, I've seen, like, on cartoons and everybody thinks it's really funny when, like, a dolphin will get, like, its head stuck in a beer can or something. But it isn't funny and it does happen and I, and I think that people need to be more aware of that. It's surprising how, um, the basking shark is different to the great white. It's it's got no teeth and it catches the plankton on its gills and it will just swallow it. And it's amazing, really. You 
shouldn't put that much rubbish on beaches because it's killing more and more animals from the sea and soon there might be no more, hardly any more animals left in the sea.